Hi everyone. Sorry it's been such a long time since my last video. Because I work in healthcare, um, I have to wear a mask all the time, as we all should be. But the trouble is I'm actually, it turns out, allergic to surgical masks. Uh, so I have had wild face uh, contact dermatitis and all around my mouth particularly bad. Um, and that has meant that I haven't wanted to film any videos and today is my last day on steroid cream so I thought I better film while things were as good as they're gonna get. In Sydney we can travel within our state um, so I've been going to Jarvis Bay a lot because it's free accommodation and um, it's a really beautiful area to explore so um, like I hiked um, one day through a, um, through, well, I don't know where the hell I was. Theoretically, I was following Google Maps and it was supposed to be a short walk, but there were no signposts at all and you couldn't see where you were going because Australian scrub can be like little scrubby plants, which is why it's called scrub, but you can't see through it when it's densely packed and it was all just above head height, so... I couldn't see where I was going. Well, this is not terribly helpful. And there were all these paths that diverged, like it was basically like life. You had all these paths that diverged and no indication of which path took you in which direction. And so you just had to pick. And I tried to follow Google Maps and it took me the wrong way. Anyway, so basically the moral of the story is this walk is like a life and don't follow Google Maps. All right, Google says I've got to go this way which is deeply unhelpful. Again, not very helpful finding. Just when you thought the signage couldn't get any worse, it does. Now there's no signs at all. According to Google, this is the way to go. Looks great. I ended up in Gossang's tunnel, which is amazing. I've never been there before. It was so incredible. And I'd really like to go there again um, because I thought it was going to be a quick hike in and a quick hike out. And because I got lost along the way, I was um, fighting for sunlight to get back to the car. Um, but I'd really like to just sit there and watch the world go by because it's this weird little tunnel in the middle of nowhere where you just kind of hike through and you come out and there's this huge glorious view of the sea and you're just on this little battered rock ledge watching the whales go by. I mean, it was just incredibly beautiful and even the hike in, even though I got lost, was still pretty beautiful.
last time I went down there, I did I had what's it called a drawing drawing room rocks uh, just outside of Berry, and again that was supposed to be a really quick 45 minute hike in, but it didn't actually take longer than 45 minutes. It was a quick hike in, but that bitch was uphill. <laughs> But once you got up the top, there were these weird little rocks that were kind of perched and obviously created by, you know, years and years and years of wind battering. And they were just like little, little tables and little chairs and there was one that's actually shaped like a chair and you can climb right into it um, and sit right on the edge. And I'm fine with heights and sitting on the edge of mountains and stuff like this, but when I sat in that little chair, you were right on the edge like I've never been hanging that far over the edge and yet you feel secure because your butt was like firmly held in this little chair but you were right on the edge so I didn't sit there for that long and it was fine getting in but it was actually quite hard to get out safely without feeling a bit concerned but whatever but it again was a really beautiful hike and it was and, I mean, it's interesting. So if you ask me if I enjoy hiking, I would say no. But that's what I do every time I go on holidays and every time I have a break. I think it's just you get this feeling of being cooped up and then you just need to run away. And I, I just find going for some sort of adventure needs to happen. And... I mean, my adrenaline doesn't really get kicked off by things a lot. Like, you know, I've done bungee jumping, not bungee jumping, because I'm hypermobile, I'll break myself. Um, skydiving and hang gliding and no adrenaline kick at all. But, so I can't really do things for adrenaline junkies because the things that give me adrenaline rushes are things like spiders running at me and sharks and stuff. So I'm not, not on board. Um, but, I just feel like I need to get out and enjoy things and and get out and so the bay has been a really great place for that and you know in the bay I've been doing a ton of thinking and um, thinking about why it is that I'm exploring topics of like grief and death and the afterlife in the things that I'm writing and um, trying to decide what I'm going to do going forward to make myself happier um, because I think a lot of us have not been happy um, this year and I, I think for me it's been a lot longer than that and I think you know it's, I'm kind of getting to the point where it's like I, I can't keep doing this and you know I mean the other really nice thing about going down to Jarvis Bay is that if I go for a couple of days it is a three hour drive I'm taking my dog Marley and I think on it, like this is going to sound a bit insane, but you know, at this point, whatever. I think he would be dead by now if we weren't going down to the bay. I feel like every, we go down roughly once a month and he has kind of by the end of that month been deteriorating again. And then we go to the bay and he's like, yes, this place. And he goes for beach walks and and he has a really amazing time and you can just see him light back up and have fun and this time there was a whole bunch of storm damage because you know if it's not fires or plagues it's a famine or a flood here at the moment and um 
to the, the beaches were battered because they'd have massive storms. And so there were all these urchins and, um, like, if you've ever... I don't know if you get these in other parts of the world, but in Australia there are these, like, little urchiny things that grow in some parts of the beach and you press them and they squirt water everywhere and it's awesome. And a lot of them had broken off the rock walls and washed up onto the, the sand. It took me a while to work out what they were because they look like ocean poos, but... Um, not that I know what an ocean poo is, but that's not the point. But he was trying to eat the ocean poos and so basically I spent my whole days down there trying to wrestle ocean poos out of the dog's mouth. But um, he had a really amazing time in like he gets sad when we come back and it's like me too mate I don't want to come back to work either so you know I think I think having that place to go has meant has prolonged his life and certainly improved the quality of his life but I do know that we're getting close to the end and I'm gonna be a whole lot of screwed when that happens so best not to think about it too much the other thing I tend to do a lot of in Jarvis Bay is going and looking for the sunset. And usually in Jarvis there are tons and tons and tons of animals. And particularly kangaroos, they're everywhere. And, and there are some areas where I go to watch the sunset where there are usually a ton of kangaroos. And the last couple of times I've been down there they're just not there and I don't know if that's because parts of Budari National Park have been closed to because of COVID to try and protect um, some of the First Nations people a little bit more um, well at least that's my understanding of why it's been closed I might be wrong don't quote me on it but um, and maybe the animals have gone to those areas because there's less uh, you know, like tourists and people coming in the area. Maybe they have started to disperse back out into the bush as it's starting to regenerate after the fires, but the bush is still pretty damaged. Like, I can't imagine that they'd be inclined to go back into the bush. So it's hard to know if I'm seeing less animals because they're either hiding in Budari National Park or they've gone back out into the rest of the bush because Jarvis Bay itself didn't burn but the surrounding areas most definitely did. But I, th I think it might just be lower animal numbers because there are lower animal numbers which is just awful because it is a really noticeable and significant change uh, to the area and yeah it's just it's pretty confronting to, to actually see and realize that. There's, there's just a long way to go for this area to recover because this area is built up on tourism and we weren't, nobody was traveling because of the fires beforehand and now nobody is traveling for fairly obvious reasons and yeah I think it's just been really challenging. I think people are starting to go back down to the bay for school holidays and things like that because it's whale season so the whales are actually swimming past Jarvis Bay which is beautiful to see um, but yeah, I think, I just think we've been battered for nearly 12 months now. There is something really beautiful about that area though and being able to go there and reset and watch the sunset and just kick back and, you know, stare at some pelicans for half an hour that is really like got me through this last couple of months and without it, it would have been I think I would have gone insane if that has not already happened. But, um, I mean, I, I just... Jarvis Bay has been a lifesaver and I hope that the images that you can see of Jarvis Bay or of people traveling um, give you some sort of reprieve. I know that a lot of us are really desperate to get out there to the point where I'm having really vivid dreams about signing up for a job on a boat in Antarctica just so I can go traveling and then for some reason that boat decided to sail to Thailand for dinner. So I think some of us are getting a bit desperate to travel and have a break but I mean I am lucky that I have that area of Jarvis Bay there to, to run to when I need to. 
and I hope that you guys have somewhere where you are able to find some salvation and we'll hopefully see you again soon. You have got to be shitting me. That's where I came from and apparently I could have just parked. Thanks Google Maps. Done well. So I missed sunset by about eight minutes, even though I hauled us. So I thought I'd come and have a look anyway. Oh, hey buddy. Be cool, mate. Be cool. It's all good. Happy days.